With news of JT Daniels committing to West Virginia yesterday or two days ago, depending on you're watching this video, I want to take a few minutes and talk about JT Daniels, his, his strengths and what he brings to the table and how he's going to be able to fit Graham Harrell's offensive system and what he's bringing to West Virginia. So uh, before we talk more about JT Daniels, let's look at Graham Harrell's kind of offense and briefly talk about the offensive approach and kind of the air rate and how it's going to be different from uh, what Neil Brown was doing with his calm plays. And, and we'll look real quickly at the differences between Neil Brown's offense and Graham Harrell's offense, and then dive into the strengths of JT Daniels and how he fits this offense or how he could potentially uh, fit this offense and make this a much more explosive offense than it has been in the past. Excuse me. Uh, but before we continue with this video, I just want to encourage you all to consider subscribing to the channel. If you like any quarterback content, film breakdowns, uh, hell, any football, this content in general, it's all fair game here. So let's go on and talk about Graham Harrell's offense. So Coach Graham Harrell, offensive coordinator uh, at USC, past three years, right? having that air raid attack, if you will. So the, the, the air raid, there's, there's a bunch of different uh, variations now. Graham Harrell, what, what he will do is he'll spread you out. You'll see multiple formations and multiple personnel. So you may see uh, empty formation. You may see uh, you, you may see 10 formation, ten personnel. You may see 20 personnel, whatever it may be. There's going to be a variety of different personnel. And based on the field or based who's on the field uh, will dictate what play or what type of play is going to be ran. And, and from the different personnel, you'll see a lot of times they will – uh, they will use a, the, the quick passing game to set up deep passing games. So at the end of the day, they want to take shots deep. They want to push the ball downfield, but they don't want to force it. So the short, quick passing game is almost an extension of the run game, if you will, uh, at least in Graham Harrell's offense, right? So they, they do run the ball. It's not like your typical old Texas Tech air raid, uh, but they do use the quick passing game as an extension of the run game, and they want to take shots deep. So they want to get the defense kind of creeping in, almost kind of boring the defense with the short, quick games, and then take shots deep. And at USC, uh, and this number, these numbers I want you all to remember, Graham Harrell's yards per attempt last year was 7.2, and 2020 was 7, and then 8.5 in 2019. That was Keaton Slovis' best year uh, as the quarterback. And so for this air raid to run efficiently, uh, they, they, they want to push the ball downfield. They want that yards per attempt to be at least be in that 8 to 9-ish range, right? So let's look real quick at Neil Brown's offense. So yes, Neil Brown ran a, a spread offense, but it was a lot different than the air raid, right? There's a lot of different pre-snap motion, a lot of quick stuff, a lot of quick screen passes, swing passes, and that they wanted to run the ball and establish the run. Their yards per attempt last year in 2021 was 7.2, which is actually the highest yards per attempt uh, that a West Virginia offense has had since Neil Brown's been there. Uh, still not very high though, right? Especially in today's football. Uh, today's football. Today's age in football. Uh, 2020, the yards per attempt were six. In 2019, they were 6.6. .6. So their biggest thing, or the biggest thing that hindered West Virginia's offense was pushing the ball downfield. The, having a quarterback that can do it. And yeah, some was probably system, maybe some was quarterback, some was play calling. Uh, but with Graham Harrell coming in, the system's different. And the yards per attempt, at least passing, and the ability to push the ball downfield through that system uh, should increase a bit more. And bringing in JT Daniels, who has the qualities and the traits to, to be that kind of packet, pocket uh, quarterback, he has the ability to push the ball downfield. Arm strength is, of course, one of his uh, gifts that he has. But it's not just the ability to push the ball downfield and the arm strength. Uh, it's his ability to be comfortable within the pocket. He can fit the balls in the tight windows. And you'll see some of these clips we're watching of JT Daniels, whenever he's on, whenever he's feeling good, he's going to have uh, several anticipation throws, right? He's, he's able to read the defense. And, and he, he was, as any West Virginia uh, fan watching this will know, but if, if we have someone that doesn't know, he was with Graham Harrell in 2019, JT Daniels was, excuse me, when uh, he got hurt either the first or second game of the season, Graham Harrell was the OC. And so they didn't spend much time on the field together, but he at least has some familiarity within that system in the air raid system. Some other stuff of JT Daniels that I want to make note of. Uh, in 2021, he was injured, you know, most of last year. Played at the beginning, right? Got some playing time, but was injured a lot. 2019 uh, was when he originally got injured. Then 2020, last year, was really the most time he's played in college since his freshman season. And so 2020, his yards per attempt were 10.3 at Georgia. I want to say he had what, finished five games, maybe four or five games as a starting quarterback at Georgia. And you saw the offense really changed and was really able to push the ball downfield. So again, yards per attempt that JT Daniels had 
their his best season was 10.3. The ability to fit the ball in the tight spaces, the ability to have anticipation factors when you're throwing the ball, and the ability just to push the ball downfield has a has a uh, component can add a component to West Virginia that their offense wasn't able to have the past few years. And again, that could be because of the play calling, that could be because of the personnel. Uh, but now I think you're in a position to have the potential with Graham Harrell as the OC, and you know they want to push the ball downfield, even though the past few seasons they weren't able to as, as much as they would want. They do want to push the ball downfield after setting up the short game, and you have a quarterback like JT Dales who can push the ball downfield uh, and has the ability to um, fit balls in the tight spaces and has – a good feel within the pocket right now. The biggest thing with JT Downs, and this is something I don't want to talk too much about because I'm sure everyone, every article written about JT Downs has mentioned that he needs to stay healthy, right? So staying healthy, yes, that's of course his, his biggest thing. Um, but with, with that being said, if he can stay healthy, I think he has a good uh, feel within this offense and he's able to have a good fit within the offense like Graham Harrell is bringing. So that's just a quick video we have on JT Daniels and the offensive situation at West Virginia. Uh, again, it's, it's going to be a different philosophy, different approach with Graham Harrell. And I think when you add in a quarterback like JT Daniels, you can uh, you have the potential to optimize what that air raid yeah. offense can be. <clears throat> but I wonder from you, West Virginia fans, or just any fans in general of the quarterback situation, what, what do y'all think of JT Daniels going to West Virginia? How do you think he's going to pair with Graham Harrell's uh, offensive approach? Uh, again, like you you just heard us talk about these past five minutes. We think the potential is there to be pretty good, or at least optimize what the offense can do. But I want to hear from you, so let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are. We'll see you next time on the next quarterback-related video.